Today we're going to work on what, in my opinion, is one of the most important things you can have on your camper. Surge protector. This guy right here. Did a little research. Found that was one of the best ones I think it's out there. I'll explain why in a little bit. We're going to throw this inside the camper here in a little bit, so let me show you some more things. Now on this particular unit, our power area panel, our junction panel is right here cover off and we're going to install this surge protector with EPO right inside of here I added that beam there so we're going to use some deal of this equipment so we're actually going to have to take this cable out right here from inside the box which feeds the main 50 amp breaker right there and then we will attach it to this guy here and it's going to go right through it it's real simple but if you don't feel confident doing electrical work or any advanced level handiwork, I would strongly suggest to let someone else do this. This could be very dangerous if done wrong. And then right here, you got all four wires. Ground goes back on the ground bar, neutral on the neutral bus bar, and then your two hots come right up here to your breaker. It's just like you'd have at your house. <sighs> you just gotta make sure you put it in the right order. So taking pictures before you do this job, is a good idea. Whew. Anyone's wondering, it's November. I'm sorry, February. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's like summer around here, Florida. Yeah. So this is how I mounted it. The dog will light up inside of there, and then you can see the code on the very bottom. So let's go give it power. Well, it's working. Give it just a minute here. I think we'll hear the click. Oop. That made it mad. What did I do? Now, I'll be honest, we're running it on a small extension cord, which is not a good idea. But it goes to show. Yeah. Alright, that light's on there. So it's still receiving power. And I think she's supposed to auto reset. Mess with this. Be back. So this thing's pretty gosh darn cool. We put it through a little bit of test while I was off camera here. So when it's white like that, everything is functioning like it should. So now we're gonna come over here to the thermostat, and we're gonna turn the AC on, and I'll show you what happens here. This is what's the difference between pass through and interruptive surge protectors. So right now the fan is on, and in a minute it's going to kick it on the compressor. Yeah, that's right, I jumped a little bit too. So then you get a warning. So now the face is all nice and red. And I'm going to try and take a video of this, but... Oh yeah, it comes out good. E1. So then you can do one of two things. One, you can look on the manual and it'll tell you what it means. Or two, you can look in the app and the app will tell you. So it'll tell you over here, E1. Line voltage error. So while the system was running, the voltage dropped down too low. Uh, last time I did it, it was 104 volts. And it does not like to see below 104 volts. So now what happens? Simple. We take this guy and turn it back off. All right, now we're on off. That guy clicked off, which we're gonna do a review on this thing, because this is the GE air conditioner. I ain't never seen it before. Uh, we gonna talk about it. So, 90 seconds has to go by, and this bad boy's gonna reset. See how it's all nice and red? And just wait, the angle will be red in a few. 
Let me see if I can't put you down. I can do some other things in the meantime. Nope. Oh. I missed it. 90 seconds went by. It reset. That right there is what makes the difference between $100 and $200. Honest to God. This is why I went with this. So if you just simply go to a park and the voltage is wrong, when you go to turn things on, it's going to automatically turn your whole camper off. You hear that little buzz, it'll click the light over, it'll shut the system down, and it'll protect your camper. So that was kind of the thing, is I'm over here and I'm just running this on a 110 cord. And that, my friends, is not enough. Especially when you try to run an AC. Yeah. Little bitty cord. Adapted to a medium sized cord, made to a massive cord. It's 50 amp thing, it's just a hog boy. Whew, I tell you. Alright, well, back to what I was talking about. A little distracted there. Squirrel. <coughs> so, this was pretty simple to put in, all in all. The line you see there on the top, that is the original line that came in for the camper. That line right there. Uh, let's do it this way. Right here. Okay, this is what comes in through the floor. It comes in, and then they have a manual, which is right here. And it makes it really easy to understand. Basically, what you're going to do is you're going to match the in with the out. So, you look there, it's brown, red, white, black. And you come down here. I don't know if you can see it. Same thing. And that sets it up so it's a pass-through it is a pass-through inverter the power is going to pass through but it's going to monitor it at the same time it's really awesome i gotta tell you so let me see if i can show you guys the app. i want to show you guys now what this looks like so we're going to go inside of here Ooh, wait i need to turn my bluetooth back on i had forgotten about that springdale connect boom wham look at that Line one, 118 volts. Line two, 118 volts. Notice on the bottom here, line two has 4.8 amps. The A amps, there you go. Line one has 118 volts, 0.1 amp. That is a static amperage reading. That is not accurate. So, what does that mean? Simple. That means your camper is only being fed on a 50 amp circuit on one line. Okay. English skill. Got it. So what it means is on a standard household plug, 99% of all of your plugs inside of a house, short of things like your dryer for your laundry, have only two wires. And then they have what's called a ground. So it would be one hot, one neutral, and one ground wire coming into said circuit. So on a 50 amp, to make 50 amps, you need two hot lines. In other words, I have one line of voltage coming in and another line of voltage coming in. So voltage-wise, what it's reading is mostly correct, but there is no power coming in on that first line at all. It's reading the voltage that way because it can, the voltage is going down both pathways. They're not separated inside the controller or inside the surge protector. So as the voltage comes in, the only part that's actually giving power to the camper is line two, because this has the amperage. If we were properly hooked up, this would mirror the two of them. So you would have 118 volts and 4.8 amps. And then likewise on the other one. So it wouldn't change, okay? So again, now we'll show you what it means when you turn this AC on. AC is on, watch the voltage and the amperage on line two. Big drop there. Ah, bam. There it goes. See the warning? Line one error. And we'll read it here. It says that your system went below 104 volts. It dropped suddenly. It went right to that compressor that time. And that caused it all to do that. So, notice that now the voltage lines are coming in at 123 volts. That is what the voltage from my house coming into this camper is. That's a good voltage line. But now, remember as we looked at before, the face on the controller is red, it shows an E1, and that's why you go with what's called an EPO surge protector. 
All right, what does an EPO stand for? That is simple. EPO stands for Electronic Power Protection. Or, emer I'm sorry, I'm dumb. EPO stands for Emergency Power Off. What does that mean? What I just showed you. That means that when the system is seeing an incorrect reading, it's going to turn everything off on its own automatically. It has its own set parameters and it says, hey, there's a problem here. I'm going to turn it off before we start to hurt electronic components inside this camper. Now notice we're still talking and this thing is still on 123 volts and it still shows E1. Simple. In just a few more seconds, ooh, looky there, boom. The E1 on the bottom of the screen turned off and it went back on. It automatically turned the system back on. That's what emergency power off operation should do. If you go to a park and they happen to have bad voltage on one of their lines or bad neutral or bad ground, something wrong electrically, and it's a passive surge protector, that problem's gonna go right into your RV. It's not gonna stop the problem. If you have an interruptive style one, emergency power off system, those ones are gonna stop the problem from happening. It's gonna detect it and then it's gonna stop it. Okay, that's gonna be your best bet. Yeah, you're paying about $100 more. There's a reason, a really good reason. It is actively stopping the problem from entering your RV. No, if the lightning strike happens, it's not gonna stop the lightning strike. Yes, if you hook up to a campground and they've got a bad neutral, bad ground, hot, hot lead, so it's over 120 volts, or one that's under 104 volts, that's just from the settings, each one's a little different, um, it's gonna stop that power from entering into your RV and damaging it. Okay, this is a smart thing to do. Uh, we had a rental go down to the Keys and they had a situation they didn't even know about. They plugged the camper in, no surge protector on the line, and our inverter came back inoperable. Okay, nothing they did. Uh, we fully believe it was something to happen at the park. Maybe there was a ground of touching salt water. Who knows? I have no idea. All I know is that we know from the research we've done, it was caused from no use of an, a surge protector. That being said, I just want to touch on this real quick. The <clears throat> bully dog system that we put on this RV, um, this is a really good system in my opinion. Uh, I am professionally an ASC certified diesel technician. I understand electronics for home and for automotives, so it does carry into uh, RVs in that way. And I will tell you this, the fact that they have a serviceable, yes I said serviceable surge protector means a lot. The Bluetooth app, if you're a nerd like me, pff, you're on it every time. You're just like, oh, what's here on the app? It's pretty cool. But on the other side of that, if you happen to have a surge in the first two years of owning it, so if you plug into a park and the line is too low or line is too hot and it blows out one of the capacitors, uh, insert video here from them, uh, they have a little, it's card, okay, it's a circuit card, circuit board, not card, circuit board, and it's got everything on it you need, and it, you just open up the case, and you plug it in, you take the bad one out, away you go. First two years, if you happen to find it, they replace it for free, that's right, free, and uh, if you have to pay for it, it's $30. Fuck, that is cheap, okay, listen to me. The surge protector itself is going to cost $200. The one I got linked here from Amazon, I paid $220, bucks, delivered to my front door. Another $30 in wire that I had to go buy to put it in. You don't have to do it the way I did it. You could get the dog bone style where it plugs in and then you plug your camper in versus wiring it in directly. This way for me, I don't even have to think about it. I plug in like I normally would, pff, away we go. Well, let's put it this way. You're going to use protection when you don't know her name, right? The park is new. Let's go ahead and use protection. Okay. All right, guys. I really hope this helps someone out. If you did, please like and subscribe. I'm going to try and do more of these weekly, just little RV tips and tricks that I found uh, between doing rentals and uh, our time spent with all the units we have. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Really appreciate you getting this point. See you around.